Graceland, the iconic home of Elvis Presley, holds countless secrets behind its grand gates. But one area in particular remains an enduring mystery, the upstairs. This part of Graceland, shrouded in privacy and completely off limits to the public, has sparked curiosity and countless rumors over the years. Why did Elvis keep it so private? And who, if anyone, shared this secluded space with him? Was it just his personal retreat? Or did others live in these hidden quarters alongside the king of rock and roll? Today, we're diving into the shocking details of who lived upstairs at Graceland with Elvis Presley, revealing the truths and confirming the rumors that have lingered for decades. If you've ever wondered what life was really like in those unseen rooms, you're about to find out. Stay tuned, because what we've uncovered might just change everything you thought you knew about Elvis's life at Graceland. 6. Elvis's Private Sanctuary The second floor of Graceland was more than just another part of the mansion. It was Elvis Presley's private sanctuary, a hidden world where he could retreat from the pressures of fame and the outside world. Unlike the rest of the house, which was often bustling with visitors, friends, and family, this upstairs area was strictly off-limits to all but a select few. Elvis spent countless hours in his private quarters, which included his master bedroom, a place where he often locked himself away for days, lost in his thoughts or simply seeking solitude. Adjoining his bedroom was a personal office, a unique space designed to cater to his needs, complete with a custom desk gifted to him by RCA that featured a built-in radio and TV, advanced technology for its time. The second floor also included Lisa Marie's bedroom, where his beloved daughter stayed during her visits. The room still bears the same wallpaper from her childhood, a nostalgic reminder of the moments she spent with her father. Elvis's wardrobe room was another significant part of this private realm, where he stored his iconic outfits, from jumpsuits to casual wear, in an expansive walk-in closet that once served as a bedroom. This closet symbolized his larger-than-life persona, filled with the flashy clothes that became a hallmark of his performances. For Elvis, this secluded upstairs area was not just a living space, it was his refuge, the heart of Graceland, and a deeply personal sanctuary that remained hidden from the prying eyes of the world. The family upstairs, Minnie Mae Presley. While the upstairs of Graceland was famously Elvis's private domain, it wasn't a place he kept entirely to himself. Among the select few who shared this intimate space was his beloved paternal grandmother, Minnie Mae Presley, affectionately known as Dodger. Minnie Mae was much more than just Elvis's grandmother. She was a steady and comforting presence in his life, especially after the tragic loss of his mother, Gladys. She moved into Graceland in 1957, and her bond with Elvis grew stronger with each passing year, making her a true second mother to him. Minnie Mae's room was painted in a soft blue, echoing the peacefulness of her demeanor, and it became a little sanctuary of its own within the upstairs quarters. She played a crucial role in Elvis's life, providing a sense of normalcy and family stability amid the chaos of his superstar lifestyle. Minnie Mae was often seen as the quiet matriarch of Graceland, overseeing household affairs with a gentle but firm hand. She was not just a resident, she was an essential part of the family fabric that kept Graceland feeling like home. Her presence was a constant, offering Elvis a sense of comfort and connection to his roots. Even as fame continued to swallow up more of Elvis's time, Minnie Mae's love and support were unwavering. She would live at Graceland until her death in 1980, outlasting both her son Vernon and her grandson Elvis, and she remained a steadfast symbol of the Presley family's enduring ties. Her long-standing presence in the mansion was a testament to the deep family connections that Elvis cherished and sought to protect within the walls of his beloved home. The presence of Priscilla and other girlfriends. Elvis Presley's life upstairs at Graceland wasn't just filled with family. It was also a space that witnessed the comings and goings of many women who played significant roles in his life. Among them was Priscilla Presley, who moved into Graceland just shy of her 18th birthday in the spring of 1963. Priscilla's presence marked a new chapter in the upstairs living quarters, as she quickly became a permanent fixture in Elvis's private world. She lived there for the next eight years, 
becoming intimately acquainted with the secluded life that Elvis had carved out for himself. The upstairs became a backdrop for their budding romance, filled with moments that were as private as they were passionate, shielded from the outside world's prying eyes. But Priscilla wasn't the only woman to experience the unique upstairs life at Graceland. Elvis had a long line of girlfriends who spent time in the secluded quarters, each leaving their own mark on the king's private sanctuary. Elvis, ever the generous host, even designated a spare bathroom specifically for his girlfriend's use, a small but telling detail that highlighted the revolving door of relationships that defined his upstairs lifestyle. To accommodate his girlfriends and to keep up with his evolving needs, Elvis frequently made changes to the upstairs layout, modifying rooms, and adding personal touches to reflect his flamboyant style and ever-changing desires. Each renovation, from expanding his closet to adding personal touches to his office, was a testament to how Elvis adapted his space to suit his lifestyle, ensuring it always felt like his domain. For Elvis, the upstairs was not just a retreat, but a place where he could share his private world with those closest to him, whether it was family, friends, or the women who captured his heart for a time. This hidden realm of Graceland was where Elvis could be himself, surrounded by those who truly knew him, away from the spotlight that constantly shone on the king of rock and roll. 3. Life After Elvis's Parents After the tragic passing of Elvis's parents, Vernon and Gladys Presley, the upstairs quarters at Graceland continued to serve as a home and sanctuary for close family members. One such figure was Elvis's Aunt Delta Mae Biggs, who moved into Graceland after the death of her husband. Delta's arrival marked a new chapter in the Presley family's life at the mansion, and she quickly became a vital part of the household's daily rhythm. Sharing a bedroom with Minnie Mae, her presence brought both comfort and a sense of continuity, as she stepped into a role that was part caretaker and part guardian of the family's legacy. Delta wasn't just another relative living at Graceland, she was actively involved in managing the household affairs, overseeing the maids, and ensuring that the home ran smoothly, especially in the years after Elvis's mother, Gladys, passed away. Delta's role at Graceland was far more than just supervisory. She embodied the spirit of resilience and family loyalty that had long defined the Presley family. Her connection to Elvis was strong, and she provided him with the familiar touch of home that he so deeply craved even at the height of his fame. Delta's devotion to her nephew and her commitment to maintaining the warmth and order of Graceland made her an indispensable figure in the household. Despite the fame and the constant buzz surrounding Elvis's life, Delta managed to keep Graceland feeling like a true family home, a feat that required both patience and a deep understanding of Elvis's unique needs and quirks. Delta continued to live at Graceland long after Elvis's passing, holding on to the memories of her family and the home they had shared. She was the last resident of Graceland, staying there until her own death in 1993. Delta's enduring presence at the mansion served as a poignant reminder of the Presley family's enduring bond and their shared history within those iconic walls. In many ways, she was the last living link to the intimate, private world that Elvis had fiercely guarded and her continued residence was a testament to the deep familial ties that Graceland represented. 2. The upstairs remodels and personal touches. Elvis Presley was not just the king of rock and roll. He was also a man who loved to shape his surroundings to reflect his tastes, passions, and personality. Nowhere was this more evident than in his private upstairs quarters at Graceland, which he continually remodeled and reimagined throughout his life. These renovations weren't just cosmetic, they were deeply personal, turning the space into a true extension of who Elvis was, away from the spotlight. One of the most significant transformations was the creation of his private office, tucked away next to his bedroom. This wasn't just any office, it was a space where Elvis could work, think, and escape, featuring a custom-built desk gifted by RCA in honor of his massive success. The desk, equipped with a built-in radio and television, was a technological marvel of its time, perfectly suited for a man who loved to stay connected to the latest gadgets and entertainment. Elvis's upstairs office also had padded walls to keep out noise, making it an ideal place for him to retreat when he needed peace. 
It was here that he would often spend hours, surrounded by mementos of his career and personal life, reflecting on his journey and planning his next moves. Another standout feature of his upstairs sanctuary was the organ stationed in his office, where Elvis would often play, letting the music flow whenever the mood struck him. Music was his lifeblood, and having an organ in his private quarters allowed him to create melodies whenever inspiration hit, whether he was alone or with close friends and family. Beyond the office, Elvis's flair for personal touches extended to his wardrobe room, which he converted from a bedroom into a vast closet filled with his iconic jumpsuits, stylish jackets, and countless accessories. It wasn't just a storage space, it was a testament to his unique fashion sense and larger-than-life persona. This room, filled with vibrant colors and bold patterns, encapsulated the essence of Elvis, flamboyant, daring, and unforgettable. Every inch of his private upstairs quarters was meticulously crafted to reflect his needs and desires, making it not just a home, but a living, breathing part of his legacy. For Elvis, these remodels were more than just changes to a physical space. They were his way of creating a sanctuary that was truly his own, where every detail told a story of the man behind the legend. 1. The Last Residence and Graceland's Legacy when Graceland opened to the public in 1982, it quickly became a pilgrimage site for fans eager to catch a glimpse of the world Elvis Presley once called home. Yet, even as the mansion transformed into a museum celebrating Elvis's extraordinary life and career, there was one part of the house that remained strictly off limits, the upstairs. At the heart of this restricted area lived Aunt Delta Mae Biggs, the last resident of Graceland. Delta's presence in the home was a poignant reminder of the Presley family's enduring connection to the mansion, and she maintained her private quarters, even as the rest of the estate became a public monument to her nephew's legacy. Delta, fiercely protective of her privacy, continued to live in the upstairs rooms, guarding the last bastion of the Presley family's personal history until her death in 1993. Delta's continued residence at Graceland was more than just a matter of personal comfort. It was a symbol of the family's lasting bond to the home they had shared through decades of triumph and tragedy. After Delta's passing, the estate made the decision to expand the public tour, opening up previously unseen areas of the house. The once private kitchen, which had been off limits to visitors during Delta's lifetime, was added to the tour in 1995 giving fans a glimpse into the daily life that had unfolded within those walls. The family's personal quarters downstairs, including Vernon and Gladys's bedroom and Minnie Mae's blue-painted room, were also eventually integrated into the tour, allowing visitors to connect with the intimate spaces that had been central to the Presley family's life. Despite these changes, the upstairs remains closed to the public, preserving the mystique of Elvis's private world. This decision to keep the upstairs off limits serves as a tribute to the king's desire for privacy and the sanctity of his personal space. It's a place frozen in time, filled with the echoes of the people who lived, loved, and shaped the Presley legacy within those walls. Graceland's transformation into a public landmark has ensured that the stories of those who lived there are not forgotten, but the upstairs remains a powerful symbol of what the mansion once was, a family home, filled with memories, laughter, and a profound sense of belonging that continues to captivate the hearts of Elvis fans around the world. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think about the private life Elvis led behind those closed doors? Were you surprised by who shared his space upstairs, or did you have your own ideas about what went on in those secret rooms? Share your thoughts, theories, and memories in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going and continue exploring the fascinating, hidden corners of Graceland together. This video was made possible thanks to your various forms of support. Simply watching it is a contribution to creating more content. And of course, there are those who contribute even more by using the thanks feature or by becoming channel members who also play a significant role. So what are your thoughts on this? Sound off in the comments section down below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for celebrity news and updates every day.